Hi there, it's Peter here, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's short screencast I'll show you how to split the Sublime Text Editor in two halves, horizontal or vertical, and how the Spotify.com website was put together. And at the end of it I'll give you a link to the scroller cheat sheet, the first draft, so stay tuned till the end of it. The first thing I wanted to show you is how to split the Sublime Text Editor window in two views, into two halves, horizontally or vertically, which is very handy, especially when you're working on a responsive websites. I've been using this uh, almost every day, having the mobile breakpoint in the upper half and then the desktop breakpoint below, and you can easily override the values and see how you actually, how these two are overriding each other. This was done using the add-on for Sublime Text called Origami, which lets you split window however you like it. Okay, I found it very, very easy, especially the horizontal split. So once you install it through the package control, you'll see in a Sublime Text extra option in the view section, which is called Origami and gives you two dropdowns for pane and file. So if you open any of the files uh, inside of Sublime Text and go to View, Origami, Pane and Create below, that will split the window in two halves. And then if you go again to Origami, File, Clone to Below, it will open the same file in the below half. Okay, this is very handy as I said. If you then search for the comments inside of the file, can easily jump into different breakpoint and very easily see how the values are overriding each other. Okay, so very handy, very simple trick. I'm using this almost every day on my project, especially the responsive ones. It's very handy, so hopefully it saves you some time as well. I receive quite a lot of deconstruction requests from uh, the readers and from uh, YouTube watchers as well. So make sure you keep sending them to me. Today we're going to look at Spotify.com, which is a simple website, simple one pager with sections, which scrolling at a slower rate than the rest of the page, which creates this nice parallax scrolling effect. And we're going to have a look at how this was created. Initially, I thought this was created using a cover background image property on the, on these sections. But as you can see, when you inspect the element, there is no image and there is no background image applied to this scroller main uh, container. It is only being resized by JavaScript, okay? So there is no background image applied to it using JavaScript. And even in the CSS, there is no background to it, which was quite strange at the beginning. So I had to dig in a little bit more and find where these background images are applied to it. So as you can see, there are data attributes, data image and data image mobile. And when you grab that URL and try to see it in a browser, so this would be the larger image. As you can see, that's the larger image loading on desktop. And I guess there must be a smaller image with SM, which is the smaller image loading on a mobile. So these two images are applied to a different container than this one. And the way I found the containers for these images was quite simple, but it was more investigation than usually. So I went to the network section and uh, refreshed the page looking at the scripts uh, which are loading and then clicking on each of them and looking at the response. So I was looking for something like scroller, parallax, scrolling. And once you click to a couple of them, this one is actually the one I found uh, which contains the code. So once you see parallax scroller, image artwork, you can be sure that this is the place where everything's happening. So I copied everything and and minified it using JS Beautifier. Which is quite handy for unminifying 
minified JavaScript or HTML or CSS. And then I copy all this code into a Sublime text editor. We'll paste everything in and change the color coding from plain text to JavaScript just to make it easier to read. And the class we'll be looking at is by going back to the HTML, we'll be looking at something scroller. Scroller. We can search for scroller. We can search for data image. Something, some of these data will be actually used in the JavaScript file. So if we scroll down or if we search for scroller, so there is a function parallax scroller. And when you look closer, there is a variable called holder, which is a diff scroller holder containing an image which has a source of image from the main data attribute okay so on the page must be a scroller holder diff which is then appended or prepended to a body so at the start of the body html there should be a diff with the image containing the background image or the image itself actually so if we're going back and if we scroll up the page you'll see that these are our scroller holders so these are containers for each of the breaking section for each of the images the containers are actually moved up at a slower rate than the page itself and once they are out of the view they stop scrolling so essentially there is a diff within the body of the page which is transparent so there is no background image applied to these divs so if we apply background color RGBA RGBA 0 0 0 0 0.5 we'll see a transparent overlay div which is essentially transparent by default and behind it is a fixed position element so that would be the first one or the second one actually so this is the second one, which is a translate 3D. So we are animating it on the Y axis. And it has in a CSS left top offset and position fixed and overflow hidden. Okay, so when you resize the page, you also see that this div and the image inside of it is automatically resized. Okay, so this on resize, on Windows resize, the div is resizing, the image is resizing, and also the holder or the main scroller area is resizing as well. Once you understand the scroller data attributes, you will definitely can create similar effect using scroller.js and the following scroller cheat sheet might help you to achieve that as well. If you've ever worked with scroller, you definitely know this guide which helps you to understand each of the data attributes and how they contribute to the scrolling animations and i've decided to create my own variation of this which you can download on the, this link hope it will make it more clear and uh, make it easier to look at okay so this was created uh, based on the requests from the parallax scrolling masterclass students and you can enjoy it as well And that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. And if you've got a website which you want me to deconstruct in my future videos, send me an email I'll, and I'll see what I can do with it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or like the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.